everyone, thank you so much for checking back in. Today we're, I'm going to show you how to make some di dark rye sourdough hamburger buns. So on day one, this recipe takes up two days, you're going to make your Levon. A Levon is basically a starter mixed with any of the flours that you are going to use in your bake um, that is made normally the day before in order for some fermentation to set in, but you can also alternatively just use fed sourdough starter. So I started by mixing some starter, dark rye flour, and water together. All of the ingredients are there for you to know the specific grams. So you're going to let this ferment for about 12 hours or ideally overnight until completely bubbly. We love this image of a perfectly bubbly sourdough starter or levon and this is what will eventually leaven our dark rye sourdough hamburger buns. Look at those air bubbles. Next we're going to mix all of our wet ingredients. So because dark rye sourdough is dark we have to get that color so in part we get it from molasses in addition to some soy milk I add in this recipe and some coconut oil which will help add to the unctuousness of these breads mix those together and make sure that your coconut oil is melted this is the best way to incorporate it into any bread dough Mix these ingredients until completely homogenous and then set it aside and we will work on our dry ingredients. For the dry ingredients, we're going to be using a mixture of flours. So you can opt to substitute, but I found that this is the perfect blend to sort of have a nice roll or a hamburger bun um, for a hamburger bun. I chose to use some dark rye flour, cocoa powder, bread flour, whole wheat flour, and salt. The best option to change is perhaps whole wheat flour for all-purpose flour and maybe bread flour for all-purpose flour, but definitely keep that dark rye flour to stay true to rye bread. The cocoa powder, of course, in addition to the molasses, will add that rich, dark, chocolatey brown color to your bread. Um, and the salt, of course, for taste. Whisk these until completely homogenous, and then we're gonna add our wet ingredients to our dry ingredients. Um, in this video, I chose to do it by sifting the dry ingredients into the wet ingredients. I wanted to see if it really made a difference. Honestly, it didn't, so you could just knead these by hand because either way, your dough is going to have to auto-lease. So be sure to do this at your own pace, making sure that everything is completely mix together and that there is no flour remaining in the bowl of whatever bowl you're using to create this dough. To add all of your sourdough levon that you've mixed the day before, the night before hopefully, that's super nice and bubbly, very active and ready to be added. As you can tell, mine's sort of steeped out of the mason jar. Tons of activity happening in mine. Add it into your sourdough bread now that it's coming together and knead it until completely homogenous. This will take about five to ten minutes of kneading um, and mixing. Cover your dough with a tea towel or any sort of towel you have around um, in the middle of a series of folds. Stretching and folding is a way to develop gluten in your bread. I added two to three stretch and folds about 30 minutes apart. This is really simple. You wet your hand a little bit with some water and then grabbing the outer edge of the dough, pull it up and towards the middle of your bread until all of the circumference of your dough is covered. Then let your dough rest and proceed to do the same thing 30 minutes later. When you're done with your stretch and folds, we're going to let this dough prove for about, let's say, five or six hours. Sometimes, depending on the activity of your starter, this can take about overnight, so 12 hours, 8 to 12 hours to completely prove. Um, you can tell that the dough has proven completely when it has doubled in size. Now that your dough is perfectly doubled in size, which we love to see, you're going to deflate it. 
take it out of the container. And then, per usual in all of my bread videos, we're going to take our bench scrape and then divide the dough into individual hamburger buns. I made 12 buns out of this recipe, um, approximately 115, 120 ounces each. Uh, this of course depends on if you added any additional water to your dough. Um, I added just a bit more as you saw from the initial mixing portion of this video and so mine were a little uh, larger because of this but either way you're going to take your individual hamburger bun dough pieces and roll them to the shape of a hamburger bun. I like to flatten my hamburger buns just a little bit as I've shown in previous videos and top them with caraway seeds because I enjoy um, the taste of caraway seeds and also a flatter bun because then it includes a larger patty. If I'm in the mood for a big wonkin black bean patty that is large, delicious, I want a bun that fits it. So I choose to flatten my patties just a little bit, my hamburger buns just a little bit to accommodate for that size. This is completely optional. I then took a score and added just a cut, a little slit down the middle of each hamburger bun to allow some even rising while it baked in the oven. And I baked them in the oven for about 20 minutes at 375 degrees Fahrenheit for about 20 minutes, 18 to 20 minutes, making sure to flip them halfway and turning them around so they cook evenly. I have an old oven, so it's taken me a while to sort of understand the way it works, but I finally have it down to a science, so be sure to know your oven just as well. When they're done baking, remove them from the oven, let them cool completely, and enjoy with your favorite burger and burger toppings. These buns can be stored in the refrigerator for up to a week or frozen for up to six months. Thank you so much for watching. Subscribe for daily shorts and weekly vegan tutorials. See you next week.